America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a chance to go over the minutes from our last meeting. Entertain a motion to approve. Double. All those in favor? Okay. Work well, works. Information only. Any questions? All right. Um, no public hearings. Old business. Top of the list, shop. Uh, okay, so I had emailed you the financial review so that you guys could have eyes on it Then pending our last meeting regarding Apache Drive, the expenses we're looking at with that, with the request from Fedco and the request from Compassionate Healthcare. So did that, did it make sense to everybody? I tried to keep it simple and detailed as much as possible so you guys would know um, what we're looking at financially so that we could support the projects. Yes, we can support both projects. We can support the request from Fedco. The only caveat is, is uh, I did email Brian and ask him about pushing off our budget hearing, which thankfully I did, and so that we can have a budget hearing next month so that I make sure you guys are okay if I adjust the Economic Development Fund, Redevelopment Fund, and potentially the general fund for Compassionate Healthcare if you guys want to add a line item for them. A continuous one, so I can do that before a hearing next month. But that was all. Uh, basically, our ARPA money is going to cover any shortfall we have with Apache Drive. So thank goodness that'll be the case. And the sidewalk, the ADA sidewalk grant that we have coming, that one, um, as you can see, that's a uh, two hundred thousand dollar match that we have to come up with. Right now, we've been paying for engineering out of our CCD fund and uh, getting reimbursements back into that fund from there. So that's the, uh, and again, there's other some outlying things that we have hanging out there that we're not sure where the loop is gonna be closed. We do have a four street sidewalk project that we've been kicking around for probably about a year and a half over the bridge, but it was a culvert issue with the bridge right over here and trying to make sure that we, how we can actually come across that safely to meet ADA requirements. So that one is still, we think we have that one, but again, if we move forward with that project next year, um, depending on what Mr. Odell wants to do, if he wants to move forward with that or not, then that's gonna be out of our pocket for that one as well. So from a finance side of it, we should be fine to move forward. Do you have any questions for Chuck? Okay, so that takes us to the actual requests. Um, any discussion? I'm gonna take compassionate health care first. Compassionate health. Sure. Questions, concerns? We wanna go ahead and add that to the budget. Yes. Can we get a report on what the hospitals, because I think there was a meeting that you had. Yes. Uh, but I went to the uh, board meeting today at the hospital and they did move forward to fund us again at $50,000 for next year. So it was 75 until this calendar year, uh, which statistically that made them supporting us at 48% of our total income. And so going down to the 50,000 this year and then approving that again for 2024, they are supporting us at about 29% of our total income. But they're going to keep the same one? They are going to keep, yes. So the 25 was a decrease of this year, and they did not decrease it any more for 2024. So are we looking to do 15 this year and then put 15 in the budget? Then is that what we're talking about, Brian? Yeah, yeah, put it in a, in a continuous line item on our budget. <clears throat> and then if the hospital gets healthy and they do something, you're going to come back and report that to us. Absolutely. Because so the oversight in the hospital, I, I mean, they, they know more about what you're doing than, I guess, in a year in, year out. But I'm, if you know where we're at for the next year, 
here and have her. So I do a motion. Yeah, it's going to motion to approve it at 15. I'll motion to approve it at 15. And the budget? And, and, and the line on and the budget. Second. I was moved and seconded. All those in favor? All right. Uh, FedCo. Thank you all. The Blackadder project. <clears throat> um, the contract for that gas line will expire in September prior to our meeting. We talked about the annexation. The simple would be voluntary. Um, if you have the map in front of you, lots 10, 9, and 8 have their two property owners represented there. One is a definite no on voluntary annexation. The other one was he was he, he could go either way. Um, I'm working on getting some information for him. That being said, we have a couple options we could just annex lots one through seven, and then we have a weird corner that's in, in the county, not in the city, which would create an interesting situation as far as plowing that drive. Um, if one of the owners agrees, I think we meet the threshold of over 51% of property owners willing to do it. We could push forward, but it would not be a fun situation and it would cost us. I can't remember off the top of your head, what was that? Well, we don't have, we don't know for sure on legal, but from, we have to do a finding, obviously we have to do an annexation fiscal report. So the estimate for, because we'll have to include legal counsel, financial advisors, and all of that in order to prepare this, the annexation plan. So I don't know, Andy, if you're comfortable with that, or if that would be something we would need to seek, like Ice Miller or somebody like that. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with the challenge to annexation. I think you, I think we need to bring in uh, counsel for that. Okay. Um, at least on a consulting basis. If if I were just comparing overall costs, the cost of elevating it from a super voluntary to a challenge to annexation probably is going to exceed the marginal cost of attending to that stretch of the driveway uh, for a, a, a pretty healthy period of time. And we won't know the, the return on investment as far as when businesses start to build out there. That's the other, that's part of the annexation plan. That's part of their fiscal um, projection on what that looks like once it's annexed and industry moves in with it, what's already existing um, because of it being challenged, even if you have two of the three property owners saying yes, we're in, you still have the challenge. Oh sure, and, and you could you could lose and end up with nothing, and then go back and do the super voluntary for the seven months anyway, um, and then you've got the cost of both those processes, which is probably not. Yeah. No. But you had said that you thought maybe he could be coaxed a little bit? I mean, it, what's his reasoning? Not the one. Not the one? He's, Not at all? He's adamantly opposed. I mean, the, looking at the, on here, it looks like you said 8, 9, 10 are already taken, and there's installed standard gas service. If that, my understanding is they're already using a different LP the gas. The gas line, if you follow that over, it's on the other side of the road. No, I don't say but on the, on the one that we got here, yeah. it shows it's extending over, is that would they be amenable to the annexation without having to pay for the gas service to their properties? My, my understanding that they, yeah, because they already have LP. I understand that, but if the, right. but if, it, if the, the gas is not part of the, the equation, if they, the we're looking to annex that whole area and to do yeah. that, we're gonna have So everything's already there. Yep. So he, he's already put his investment mm -hmm. in that. Right, right. so, so, so yes, the, the prospect of, I mean, what he would get, we would, we would we would plow the road, and he would have city police coverage. He already has fire coverage because of the agreement. Um, so he just looked at why would I increase my costs for, sure. for that? 
once they do that, we've already given them the go-ahead to do it. We may very well have the numbers back within 60 days. So to answer your question, I would say it's, it's feasible to be able to go to him and say, hey, really, this is what you're only, this is all you're looking at. Are you still opposed?
you know, the um, gun shop issue because they didn't hook it up to the city. Downtown? Downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's the likelihood of something like that happening here? Like, okay, we're, we're gone, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> or we can't remember. Mm -hmm. and, and the new owners of that goes, what? I'm not annexed. How the heck did that happen? Right? I mean, isn't that, a, isn't that an issue? Could it become an issue? Well, if, if they take that, they become an it would be voluntary if they wanted it. And then the gun shop didn't well, get sold because no. of all that. I was going to say, that was a that was sewer. That was a sewer line issue. And right. because of current <laughs> state law and our superintendents, if you were within 300 feet of a sewer main, you are required to look up to it. So there's sewer there, so we're good with that one. We have a water line. We don't have any regulations on water lines at this point. Uh, that may be something in the future that will change. That will be, there will be a requirement that if you're so many feet from a water main, you've got to look into it. So they could use a well as far as gas. We don't control the gas, about SNPSCO. So I don't know what they're. Yeah, if they wanted to tap on. But Line would they be would there, pay but they would have to pay to get, sure. get it up to their building if they wanted to go that route. So, but as far as the services go, isn't necessarily contingent upon the annexation of it. Um, other than we we would benefit financially and we would be able to grow. Right now, if, if we continue down the path that we're going, which is we extend services and don't require annexations or, or force annexations through. We're never going to grow. Absolutely. So, at some point, we've got to actually do it. I would encourage so us to go ahead and. To do it. So the wheels are turning. Yeah. We're, we're looking at it. We're trying to figure it out. So, 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 so I move that we go ahead and fund Fedco. So for the Bitsco project on Fourth Street, the thirty-three thousand. Yeah. Thirty-three thousand. Michael, 33, 354, 450. Yeah, it was 30, yeah. 33, 354. Yeah. <laughs> can we just say 33, 4? Yeah. I like round numbers. <laughs> you can round up yours 100 if you want. Okay. Uh, Robert. <laughs> I, I will second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Yes. Yes. Is anything in that motion conditional upon Fedco consenting to the annexation or requiring anyone that gets deeded the property? I think mean, we should amend it to at to least have it. Fedco voluntary voluntarily let us annex the lots one through seven, and then we will pursue the others, but not make it mandatory. Is that too convoluted? No, but but the, the part B to that is if if Fedco is in a position to sell lot three, can Fedco require the purchaser of lot three I think, I think that's as a what condition? We yeah, we, we wouldn't have to do that. It would be a condition of the sale of these lots after tonight. Let me interject. What, okay. the, when Casey and I had talked about this with uh, some other properties, what she had recommended at that time was is that it's written into the purchase agreement that they will agree to a voluntary annexation with no objections That's how it and put that yeah. into a purchase agreement so okay. whenever the annexation happens okay then does that make sense we can do that I yes that sounds really good yeah we, we, we amend the motion okay that verbiage do you need to restate the motion again? No, I have I have a question if you want to further it. discuss. Okay. Um, because I thought we were talking about, does that, by doing that, if we decide to go ahead with that, does that not let us take that area? If we take the seven, because it's easy now, does that eliminate I us? don't think it closes the door on a future of the other three lots. Okay. Okay. The only right. the, the only conceivable problem with the other three lots is you get to preparing the fiscal plan for the other three lots, 
and we can't point to any service they would get post annexation because they're already getting all of those services. Sometimes that is a problem with the physical plan. So, but conceptually, no, there, there's no reason we couldn't do a second voluntary annexation for those. But from a practical standpoint, if, if you slice that pie too small and you can't show in the fiscal plan how it would change things, that can be a, that can be a practical issue. So, okay, so if the seven, if you get people that come in and they're bought, they're in, but then you want to take take that whole drive, you can't use because it, I thought it was a simple majority. You could, you could annex that area in if you had that many owners agreeable to it. But this, since we only have no to guarantee, it goes to litigation. Now, the simple majority okay. is the bare minimum for a petition. The simple majority is not does not lock in an annexation. Okay, simple majority does not lock it in. So it doesn't. So even though Fedco owns all those lots, just because if they start selling them and get more owners, I mean they. The count is one now. Doesn't really matter if we have two or three people that own that versus just one person, because it's. If they let's put they if, if they're all petitioners and they percent. all sign the petition, then yeah. one is the same as five. But if if we want to annex an area and we have four petitioners and one person who is not petitioned, not joined the petition, then we do not have a super voluntary annexation. So one out of nine could still. Mm -hmm. Could still cause the litigation and could okay. still. Okay, so all right, yeah. So I'm good with the. So we've got good. a motion on the floor, move and second it. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? All those things. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to move down to the department report reports, but Andy has to leave. So do you have anything, Andy? Um, just kind of a follow up uh, on a similar topic. Uh, uh, we talked a little bit last month about how uh, annexation could affect the fifth district, and I, I think there's been some discussion of that already. But uh, uh, in general, uh, the County Redevelopment Commission would lose jurisdiction of the annexed territory, uh, uh, except if uh, either the, the city could pass an ordinance. Uh, uh, that uh, allows uh, additional bonds payable from that district uh, uh, or from special taxes on the property to be annexed. For, so the city could pass an ordinance that gives them some consideration, or more likely, um, if there are bonds already outstanding or lease obligations outstanding, then for the purposes of any collection on those uh, TIF revenues or special taxes, the jurisdiction of the county would continue until those bonds are retired. So you can't you, you can't make the switch mid commitment and then pull them out right. from the county. But uh, apart from that, the uh, uh, it would essentially go from uh, upon annexation would go from being uh, under county jurisdiction to being under city jurisdiction, which is probably what you expect. But which those bonds actually are due 2026, so they don't have long. It's not a long term on the payout on that on those bonds, and the county could pay them off early if they chose. And in terms of in terms of timetable, uh, I mean, it says in generally, if if the petition were signed <coughs> this week, I'm not certain we would make a January first deadline. I would I would say probably we would not. Um, and so I think you're looking at uh, any effective annexation in terms of when the auditor's office says, okay, we're going to switch and the funds start flowing to the, the city, that's probably going to be effective January 1, 2025. Mm -hmm. would you agree? I would agree. Because okay. the minimum, super voluntary annexation at minimum takes six months. If you have objection, it can take 18 months, 12 to 18 months minimum. So if Fedco sells something, they're, they're signing a purchase agreement saying that they're going to be agreed. They will, yeah, they will. Mm -hmm. They will not object to an annexation. Anything else, Andy? Um, I don't think so. There is, there is some, and I don't remember off the top of my head. There is, when they change, one of the many times they've changed annexation law in the past 12 years, um, they limited the ability of a developer to permanently put in a sold parcel and subdivision, hey, you will consent to an annexation. 
So it's conceivable, they're limited by a number of years, like that, that, that can't be affected for 20 years, you know? Mm -hmm. And so whatever that limit is, there's a possibility that Fedco is bound by that limit. So uh, even though they accept it this way, um, if, if Fedco has a, a prospect, purchases lot to sign a purchase agreement that says, yeah, I'll, I'll consent to this, and then that period of time, new period of time, let's just call it maybe five years, that period of time passes, and we never propose a super voluntary petition to them to sign, and, and then we do it after that time period, it's possible that could sunset and become unenforceable. And that wouldn't be because of anything Fedco did, that would just be the state saying, you can only make a, uh, a grantee of title to real estate, you can only hold them to that promise for X number of years. So, I mean, we've, we've done all we can do in getting that promise, but there may be a statutory limitation, and of course the General Assembly could change that again. Really <coughs> so, just be aware of that. Chief Butler. Oh, good evening. For the uh, month of July, structure fires uh, one in Rochester Township, calls for smoke two in Rochester Township, auto fire alarms two in the city, one in Rochester Township, uh, brush grass fires one in Rochester Township, vehicle fires one in Rochester Township, accidents two in the city, seven in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township. Utility pole fires one in the city, one in Richland Township, down power lines two in Rochester Township. Medical calls, 20 in the city, 11 in Rochester Township, 1 Newcastle Township, 3 Richland Township. Lift assist, 1 in Rochester Township. Gas leaks, 1 Rochester Township. Gasoline spills, 1 in the city. CO checks, 1 in the city, 1 in Rochester Township. Service calls, 1 in the city. Canceled calls, 3 in the city, I'm sorry, 2 in the city, 3 in Rochester Township. If my math is correct, that's your total of 69 calls for the month of July, and we conducted one night of training. Pending your question, that concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. Chief Shots. Uh, real quickly, uh, for the month of July, 20 accidents, 29 warnings, uh, 39 offenses, 35, excuse me, case reports. 585 calls for service, 18 lockouts, 14 people incarcerated in the near the crimes that they were lodged for. Uh, we did make some promotions between the department. Uh, Officer Ostrom is a sergeant, and Officer Atkins is a corporal. Uh, and then Atkins is at the Canine Olympics this week. Uh, Captain Dively graduated from the academy. Uh, we've got testing set for September 9th. Border Works approved getting another canine, and Officer Michael is going to be getting the, the next canine, and it's a September class for a six week uh, process. We've got two Durangos up at Cobbs Gear waiting to get set up, and then the Nickel Plate Festivals this weekend. Thank you. Any questions? Housing study on September the 14th. There will be a housing symposium out at the Geneva Center. Um, we're sending out invites next week to get everything going. Um, we've done a couple of educational seminars uh, about economic development, the need for um, industrial parks and things like that. Uh, actually, they've been pretty well received. The next one that's going to come up, we haven't got the date set yet, but it's going to be um, gentlemen's coming in from Rushville to talk about downtown development. And um, that will be the third one in about three months, I think, at that point. Um, FECO is going to host a regional uh, meeting in the next couple of weeks to uh, here in town of our regional economic development group. Uh, so that will be going off. And right now, that's about it. Thank you. Questions? All right, anything for the board? Uh, they met on the 14th. Uh, the pool is in the, I think it's 
pretty sure it's shut down. Uh, and uh, had, had a good year, they felt. Uh, I think they thought they were open maybe six to ten days less than last year, which meant revenue was down about 3,500 people, but they still served over 8,000 people. Uh, the golf course got some of their equipment. They're still waiting on their golf carts. Or gave uh, the Church of God permission to serve hot dogs in the Rochester City Park September 16th. And also, Lee reported July revenue was probably $6,000 more than last July. There was also a uh, discussion that there were some Four Seasons uh, residents there and the uh, park owner, and there's some discrepancy on. On the lines, I went out there tonight just to kind of look at the survey stakes, and I'm not sure who did the survey, but the park board's wrestling with that, as I understand. They're supposed to figure that out. Um, I, I, I can shed a little light on that. Uh, it started about a year and a half ago. Conversation: We were having some vandalism at the golf course, and it was caught on camera. There were people coming over, the um, kids coming over, taking golf balls out of play off the course. Uh, we had people coming over and actually damaging the course itself with golf clubs. Obviously, we had a couple of trucks decide to do some burnouts on our putting green. And so the board at that time talked about putting a fence up to just create a barrier. And so therefore, and before you can do that, you gotta have a survey. So they kicked it around a while, finally did the survey. The park on the any of the structures that were on city property on the south side have all been moved. So there's no longer any structures from the park, uh, trailer park on city property. But the east side, there are three trailers that actually sit across the property line. One of them is about 26 feet across the property line. So that's what the conversation is on what their, what that will look like. There's your heads up. Um, moving forward. <laughs> um, we charge a lot yeah, Well, <laughs> there's a couple of options they can do, and uh, basically everybody wants to be amicable. There's no, nobody wants to be, because the park, the trailer park has been there, I think probably longer than the golf course. So it's just a matter of figuring out, does it make sense to just adjust the property line or put an easement in. So that's what the park board's, what they're wrestling with on what that looks like. So I advised them to get a hold of legal counsel, you, and find out what might be the best option for them moving forward. So that's what it, that's how it all started on trying to prevent vandalism and people walking on the golf course while it's in play. Um, I don't know how many people here golf. However, it's very dangerous if you walk across a golf course when it's in play. <laughs> it looked like, yeah, back there that, on that east side, I would say along the, it's almost like it the is. woods yep. between that and that long, uh, and that part three. It, it is, and that's it, it right there. And yeah. if we, so because of where the, the par sits and where our cart line, line uh, cart path is, we have to be careful how we adjust that. Because if we move the line too far, then our cart path is going to be on their property. So. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so that's what they're trying to figure out what to do on that east side. South side's all good. Did so they were, the management moved everything and they were very nice about it. Did the uh, city pay for the survey or did we, the county? No, we paid for it. Uh, Park board did. Okay. How big of a fence? Just. They, they, that's what they were wrestling with. They were, I mean, if you go six foot, eight foot, I, it, they really weren't sure what exactly they wanted. And we really needed to go a little higher, but like, like I said, it was kind of well. Most of the people there that evening were there to protest a fence. They didn't want to see a fence. Sure. They yeah. got they they right. felt like they got the vandalism taken care of. As yeah. Well. And that part. So they were trying to, but they were like Shot is saying, they were wanting to try to work something out. And the, and the owner of the court was there too, because uh, he was and he said, "Well, entertain with so." want to talk reasonable but we'll entertain something so yeah. and I don't know that the park board's really going to move forward it was just the first steps in doing it was just to get a survey because we needed we knew that there were issues with some of the trailers being on city property we just didn't know exactly how far <laughs> so um, but this like I said the south side was easy to fix um, it's that east side the 
that they're going to struggle with. And, and again, I don't know that they're even going to do the fence. They, they haven't made that decision. It was just a conversation at this point. So. Okay. Any questions? All right, Brian, do you have anything on tree board EMS? Uh, tree board, they have the, the meeting for the middle of the month I was not able to attend, but look at the minutes and they are looking at removing more trees that obviously they cost money and you're running up against budget issues in terms of being able to replace trees. So I don't know if they're going to come for the, the work or not to request money for tree replacements. In years past, they, you, had to submit, you had to replace so many trees in order to maintain tree city status. But I think Thank you, Andy. Yeah, post COVID, and we sort of that slipped a little bit, so I'm not sure. Keeping that 20 year streak is was important, but if you don't have it anymore, it's not as important. And money is what it is, and it doesn't really grow on trees anymore. <laughs> so that's what they're looking at is trying to balance that out. I don't know. He, I don't know if John hasn't said anything about being on their agenda. For what? Board of Works. Agenda for what? To or ask them. No, I, I just letting the, the council know that oh. they're they're looking at you know fifteen hundred dollar tree coming out is not going to cost twenty five hundred and it's one of the dangerous ones it needs to come out before it falls on somebody exactly so we've had enough of that around here yeah great time but in terms of but that the pool of money is still the same you know take everything out there's nothing left but you can't unless they come before the board works with the city council to ask for more to plant the trees. Right. Then they just won't plant any ones. Because Because of the, well, with this tree, you're because of the tree city status. Right, right. But, you know, the, the priorities are to get the dangerous things out when I can. That's what they're doing. And the EMS, I don't know if I'm on the e email list anymore because I don't see anything from them. Okay. <clears throat> any questions? All right. And any ADA concerns, Sean? Uh, I have not had any ADA concerns brought to me to report at this point. Yeah, I have a motion to adjourn. So we sorry. Okay. 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 Okay.